I find this topic is probably, if not the hardest one I've ever had to do as far as a course, but also as a body part that I'd had to rehab in my life. So not just me, but with patients. I find, I don't know about you guys, but this is a really, really hard, and they call it the shoulder complex because it's so damn complex, but it's a very hard thing to get right. Sometimes easy to start with, but my job for today is trying to get you from, okay, I'm doing a bit of treatment, doing a little bit of rehab and getting things going, I might be doing a bit of band work. How do you then get that person playing sport, bench pressing, shoulder pressing, whatever they want to do in their life, how do you fill that gap up? And I find in my whole career, that gap is what physios, exercise physiologists, allied health professionals are not so great at. I think we've all got our things that we're really good at, some sort of ex, you know, strength and conditioning maybe the exercise physiologists, physios maybe down in the manual therapy, acute treatment end, but there's that merge in between where we need to cross over and you know, practitioners need to come up, others will need to come down and fill that gap. Today is about filling that gap with rehab, but also pushing that rehab to the sort of start of your acute phase and right up to the end of your scope of practice. So that's why I'm quite excited about this because it's taken me a long time to try and get to this point, probably 20 years, of how to work out exactly what works and what doesn't over lots and lots of clients. And hopefully that expertise is going to help you a lot today. Um, so with the shoulder, it's a little bit different to, say, treating a knee, treating a lumbar spine. There's sometimes there might be a lot of modalities, a lot of massage, that sort of thing goes on. With the shoulder, you've really got to sort of start the rehab extremely early. You have to start early with lumbar spine and start early with knee, but shoulders almost even more early to make an effect. And I find a lot of people are doing treatment for the shoulder and a lot of mobilization for the shoulder, which has to be done, but they're not getting that exercise in early. So we need to be thinking, we're trying to get away from doing everything manual therapy for the first four or five treatments, okay? Because I think that's what's being done. And I certainly got taught that at uni, and that was a very long time ago, but I can't even remember what exercise I did in my first year or second year. Even being in a sports club, I have no idea what I did for injured shoulders. I can't remember probably that, that, that far, but I do remember all the manual therapy. I remember all the mobilization, getting taught lots of Moves for the shoulder, lots of massage for the shoulder. I wasn't doing dry needling then, but we were doing ultrasound. We were zapping people. But what rehab were we doing? And I don't know about you guys, but I can't remember what we were doing. And I don't think I learned anything in the first 10 years about that rehab. I think it was in the last 10 years when I was in an environment like a gym where I was forced to do that because I had to get these people. They came in can you get me back bench pressing? I'm going, geez, I better get good at that or know at least what those mechanics are. So that's what I want to try and get through to you guys. We're not moving away completely from manual therapy. I think it's extremely important. I do a lot of mobilization and dry kneeling and massage and taping and all sorts of things for people, for shoulders, because it helps them massively in their journey. But the rehab starts extremely early, probably day one. And I'll explain to you why that is an why we're doing that exercise and treatments early, not just for pain relief, for activation, but for getting that person on board early in their program and keeping that client as a client for weeks and weeks and weeks so you can get them better back to where they need to be. They don't fall off the wagon as soon as they're pain free and stop all the treatment. All right. So the other part of this course is because we don't get this well, this sort of stuff is not taught at university, certainly not to this level. And that's why a lot of practitioners do courses, right? They do them because there's not enough taught at university and there's things developing all the time. And so we need to extend our scope a little bit more, improve our scope of practice and get that rehab learning in that is not taught at university. And, you know, I did query a few lectures and a few conferences that I've been to of, well, why, are you, why is this stuff not in a university course? And they said they don't, simply do not have the time. It is massively about diagnosis and assessment. And that's what I remember a lot about units. why we're quite good. You know, you go to the physio for a diagnosis. Okay, you go there for assessment. 
you know, what's wrong with me? How do I fix this? But the how do I fix this part is only going to be as good as that person's skill set. Okay, so that practitioner only knows about manual therapy and massage and a little bit of rehab. That's as far as as good as that person's going to get. They're going to leave that practitioner and have to jump into the gym somehow. And I want to avoid that re-injury or that failure in improvement rate by having that practitioner take them all the way through. That's why you have to learn this course as an external course. Um, and so it's not about anatomy and assessment. I, I assume that you guys are actually really good at that stuff because that's how you've been taught and you've probably been on a few other courses about assessment, maybe not necessarily the shoulder, but you know motor patterns, you know how to see stuff. And this is an interesting part. If, you can, if you've been taught how to spot a winging scap or spot, you can see that movement, oh, that doesn't look right. Okay, you know it doesn't look right in your head. You've been taught that that movement pattern is not great. And you maybe know exactly what muscles are not working because of that, because you've done the theory. But how do you then go, well, if that muscle's not working, how are you going to get that muscle better? And doing rehab for so long, you actually work out you know, how to actually get those muscles working. Your anatomy and your function anatomy improves from doing rehab. You learn it in text and you do assessments, but when you actually put that into practice and do that day in, day out, and lots and lots and lots of instruction and getting this person better by, oh, he's not responding to that, I better say it in a different way. Okay, I'm getting him doing that, I'm gonna get him to push through here. You learn how that muscle improves and then your whole sort of scope opens up as far as getting that person better because you're learning on the job, which is part of it. My job is to get you to that point to, so you're taking away heaps of information to learn on the job and get better and better and better. The more you treat, the better you're going to get. So that's my big role today. Um, and the other thing about you know, things at university is, you know, we as physios or exercise physiologists, if you're not sort of doing the exercise yourself. It's very hard in my mind to then go instruct someone. So if you are not, if you don't practice things enough, practice a scapular press or practice a push-up, how do you then instruct someone else to do it? Because that's your job, instructing someone. Now, exercise physiologists and personal trainers do this really well. They can instruct really well because they're doing themselves. They know what it feels like. They're doing exercise one hour every client. A physio may be doing exercise for 10 minutes. I'm just going to show you some exercises. But imagine showing someone for an hour of doing that. And that's maybe, again, what some allied health professionals miss out on and some do really well at. But the people who do just exercise, and this is where I sort of, you know, there's pros and cons of both camps. You've got exercise physiology who does, does exercise, but does never ever see or treat in the trenches with someone who's broken and, and injured and get them out of pain, they don't learn that part, but they're really good at this part. And so merging the two together or coming down is quite difficult for them. Same as a physio, it's quite difficult coming up. So hopefully, today, you'll be able to merge together if you like.